when you're being told to find a related angle for, say, sine of 17 degrees, you're being asked for an angle that gives you the same answer on your calculator when you do the sine of 17 degrees and the sine of this other angle. The way that you do it is to figure out whether or not the sine of 17 degrees is positive or negative. Here's what I mean. 17 degrees on the Cartesian plane, or in standard position I should say, goes from the positive x-axis up about 17 degrees. Let me label that for you. This pink line is called the terminal arm, and it always is the angle that you're being asked about deviated away from the positive x-axis. This is called standard position. Now, this angle is going to give you a positive value of sine because the formula for sine in terms of x's and y's is y over r. r itself is like the radius of the unit circle. But what matters to me more is that sine relates to y. This is above the x-axis, and so that means the related angle is also above the x-axis. The y value will have the same sine. Huh, get it? Sine? Anyways. The, my other thing is that some teachers will teach you what's called the cast rule. The cast rule says that cosine is positive down in this corner. All of them are positive in this corner. Sine is positive in this corner. And tan is positive in this corner. So if sine of 17 degrees is here, where they are all positive, it's also positive here in the S quadrant, where only sine is positive. Now here's what's fascinating about related angles, is that if this is 17 degrees, this is 17 degrees, and all you have to do is figure out how big the angle is that takes you from the positive x-axis all the way around to where you're going. This is actually 17 degrees short of 180, so you can do 180 degrees minus that 17 degrees to get 163. Your final sentence here should probably say something like, the sine of 17 degrees equals the sine of 163 degrees. That's what it means to get a related angle. And just to prove to you that that is true, the sine of 17, whoa, sine of 17 is 0.2923. The sine of 163 is 0.2923. All right, please make sure you're in degree mode if you're using your calculator for this. Shall we do it three more times for you? Yes, we shall. Where is 141 degrees? 141 degrees is over here because this is zero, that's 90, that's 180. 141 is between 90 and 180. This specifically is 141 degrees. Now we always measure our acute angles relative to the x-axis. So how big is that angle there? Well, it's that amount, 141 is that amount short of 180. 180 minus 141 gives you 39 degrees. But the real question here is, is sine positive or negative here? Well, this is the S quadrant of the cast rule, so it's positive. But if you really want to understand what's happening, you have to remember sine is y over r, and these are positive y values above the x-axis. Where else is sine positive? It's also positive here, above the x-axis, or in the a quadrant where they're all positive. What angle is this? It has to be the same acute angle, so it's 39 degrees. And how far is it to get from the positive x-axis to there? Well, it's clearly 39 degrees. So you're done. Your final sentence here, sine of 141 degrees equals the sine of 39 degrees. Do you want to check that on your calculator just to be sure? Sine 141, sine 39. 
Ah, oh, it's the same number. I'm a genius. Come along for the next genius ride. Sine of 213. Well, if this is zero degrees, 90, 180, that means 213 degrees is somewhere over here, a little bit past 180. How far past 180? Well, 213 minus 180 gives you the difference of 33 degrees. Cool. Sine is negative there. Where else is sine negative? Sine is y over r, so it's got to be on the same side of the x-axis. The answer is here. That's got to be a 33 degree angle. And how big is the angle that lands your terminal arm there? It starts all the way over here and curves all the way around to there. You are 33 degrees short of 360, like a full circle. So your answer here is 360 minus that angle of 33. I got 327. Final answer, sine of 213 degrees is equal to the sine of 327 degrees. Check, sine 213, negative 0.54, Sine 327, negative 0.54. Last one together, the sine of 296. If this is zero degrees, 90, 180, 270, we're going even past that. We must be landing here. Now, if this is 270, we've gone 26 degrees past that. But we always label our angles from the positive x-axis. How big is this? Well, this is 296. So how far short of 360 are we? 360 minus 296 gives me an answer of 64 degrees. Cool. But sine is negative there. Where else is sine negative? On the same side of the x-axis, this, by the way, is the cosine quadrant, where only cos is positive. That's how I know sine is negative there. This is the tan quadrant. Only tan is positive, so sine is negative there as well. You need to draw your terminal arm over there, recognize that that's also a 64-degree angle, and then ask yourself, how big is the angle that lands me there? This one happens to be 64 degrees past 180, so it's 244. Final answer, sine of 296 degrees is equal to the sine of 244 degrees. Cool. Sine 296. Oh, I typed the wrong number. Sine 296 negative 0.898, sine 244, negative 0.898. Beautiful. Now, if you've tuned in for these full eight minutes, you deserve a super shortcut. The absolute super shortcut is that you can always do 180 minus that number, 213. 180 minus the angle you're given gives me negative 33. And if you're doing this, I hope you know what a coterminal angle is. If you get a negative answer, your job is to add 360 to it to make it a positive answer. So 180 minus that number gives you something. And if it's negative, add 360. When I do that, I get 327. Oh my, what's 180 minus 296? I don't even know. 180 minus 296 gives me negative 116 plus 360, 244. What? It works here as well. 180 minus 17 is 163. 180 minus 141 is 39. There's your super shortcut. Um, why do teachers make you do it this way? 
beats me. Maybe it's so you can demonstrate your understanding. Best of luck.